Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Do you want more realism out of Microsoft Flight Simulator? Thought about a motion rig, but don't have the funds or the space? I've got the next best thing coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. I would first like to discuss what the product is that we're going to be reviewing today. And that's the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus Haptics Hardware. Now they do have two versions of this. One is the Pro version and this is the Gamer Plus version. The Pro version is going to be geared more towards those hardcore enthusiasts that have a full flight sim setup, maybe some extrusions, a flight seat, all the works, you may even have a motion rig yourself. In this review series, we're gonna be targeting the Gamer Plus version, and this one is gonna be geared towards the more casual simmers like myself that have a desk chair, your desk, and a couple peripherals connected. So what is a butt kicker? And more importantly, what does it do? The Butt Kicker Gamer Plus is the new and upgraded gaming haptic hardware that reproduces immersive, accurate and powerful sim racing, flight sim, and gaming effects. Experience realistic and accurate feedback from any game or flight simulator with the Butt Kicker Haptic Hardware. In today's video, part one of the review series, we will be doing a full unboxing of the product, going over all the hardware, how it's packaged. In part two, we will download all the software, connect everything to our PC, and then boot up Microsoft Flight Sim and see if we can get it working with that. In part three, I will go over my final conclusions about the product, give you some of my opinions. Unfortunately, I'm not able to relay just how good or bad this is going to feel, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. I will also go over some tips and tricks in this episode that I may have picked up along the way, and possibly any recommended settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now that being said, I will keep this review as objective as possible and try not to litter it with a bunch of opinions by me. My goal here is to give you a first-hand experience of the butt kicker and seeing just how seamless of an integration this is. By the end of this review series, my hope is that you will be able to come up with your own conclusion as to whether this may be your next purchase or not. Before we get rolling, I just have one disclaimer. Butt Kicker did send me this product for review. However, I am not being paid for my videos and all the opinions about the product are mine and mine alone. If you have any comments or questions about the Butt Kicker, or if there's something you would like to see specifically about the unit, post it down below in the comments and I'll make sure to get it in the next video. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button it is greatly appreciated. All right, so let's move right into the unboxing. Why don't you guys move in a little bit closer? You can have a better look. Before I lift the cover on the product, I just wanna show everyone that they have covered all their bases here. They have several different versions of this available for the US, Euro version, the UK version, and I believe that means Australia. So now let's crack the top and see what we have inside. All right, looks like we have a really nice quick start guide. Now the other thing I noticed just in the packaging, this styrofoam is quite thick. All right, so this is what it will look like when you get it delivered to your home. As you can see, everything looks pretty solidly packed. I mean, it's not moving anywhere. Let's get everything out on the table and then we'll go over all the individual pieces.
All right, so now that we have everything unboxed, let's go over each of the components that come inside. The first thing I want to do is take a look at all the audio and power supply cables. This is really going to make a big difference to those of you who don't have your PC right next to your SIM cockpit. We'll also get an idea of just how far we can put the receiver unit away from our cockpit or our chair that we're going to be mounting the transducer to. So let's take a look at that real quick. The power cord that comes with the receiver is six feet long. Now let's go over all the cables that they have given us to transmit all the telemetry data from your SIM into the receiver. Now we have three different options here on the table. The first one is probably going to be the most popular and that's a USB-C to USB-A cable. The second option that they give us is an audio jack option that this will get connected into either a sound card or the output sound on the back of your motherboard. Now don't get alarmed because I said sound card. A sound card is not needed to get everything connected. These are just options that you have. The third option that we have is to use a headphone jack on our PC where this will get plugged into the headphone jack. Your headphones will get plugged into this one and then the other audio cable will get connected into that one. Now let's take a quick measurement on these cables so you'll have a better idea on just how far you can have the receiver from your PC. The USB-C to USB-A cable is just about 80 inches long. Now let's take a quick measurement on the audio cables. Looks like the audio cables are the exact same length, just about 80 inches. Now for this big thick cable that they've given us, this is actually going to connect the receiver to the transducer over here on the left. We'll look at that in just a second. For this cable, we come in just under 10 feet long. So that is really cool because this way you could have this receiver parked next to your PC and then have 10 feet to get from there to your SIM rig. Now that doesn't include the extra bit of cabling that we have on the transducer itself. So once you add this, this is probably another two and a half, three feet. So when you at 12 feet away, so that's a pretty good distance. All right, so now let's take a look at this ginormous transducer. This is what's going to transmit the vibrations and all of the feel that you get inside of the cockpit, like when the engine's vibrating and running, when you put your flaps down, when you bring your gear up and you feel that clunk, this is gonna give you that feeling in your seat. Let's throw this on a scale real quick and I'll tell you just how much this thing weighs. All right, we are at two pounds, 6.2 ounces. In grams, we are at 1,090 grams. So taking a look at the transducer for the first time, there's a couple things that stand out to me. The first thing is we have two different ways in which we can mount this beast. We can either use the three mounting holes that you see here on the bottom. We also have an optional chair mount on the very back. So you would just put the pole from your chair right in here and this will clamp right over top of that. The other thing that I notice about this is the cables that come out of the side of the butt kicker are permanently installed. So you really wanna be careful with this because there's no way for this to just pop out of here without breaking. So just keep that in mind when you're mounting this to your SIM cockpit or your chair. We'll go over that a little bit more in episode number two when I get everything mounted up and I'll show you how I do mine. Now, for those of you who want to know just how big this is, let me take a quick measurement here. We are at 77.8 millimeters in diameter across. In inches, we are 3.0625 inches in diameter across. We are just about three inches tall, and in millimeters, we're at 76.4 millimeters tall. From center to center on the mounting holes, we are right around 87 millimeters. So that's gonna be 87 millimeters 
between each of these mounting holes and that's going to be measured from the center. We have a little remote control. This is going to be used to power on and off the receiver when you're in your SIM cockpit. We also have volume control, EQ control, and we'll get into some of the settings later on in the series. So now let's take a look at the brains of the butt kicker, and that's the receiver unit. Here's what the front of the unit looks like, and here's what the back of the unit looks like. On the back of the receiver, we have our power input as well as a fuse, our on off button, the USB-C input, as well as our audio inputs from our PC. Keep in mind, you only need one or the other. You don't need all of them. Over on the far left, this is going to connect the receiver to the transducer unit over here on the table. On the front of the receiver, we have a power button, a low filter cutoff, we have a high cutoff on and off, as well as a volume plus and minus button. Just taking a quick weight measurement, we are at 1,660 grams or three pounds, 10 ounces. So now let's take some quick measurements of the receiver, just in case you may have some space requirements and uh, you're not sure if this is gonna fit. So let's take a look at that. Measuring from left to right, we are just over seven and a half inches. From front to back, we are just about eight inches. And top to bottom, we are about three inches. On the bottom of the unit, we also have a couple feet. It looks like they are plastic with a rubber might be a rubber insert on the very center. All right, so that's it for today's video. If you have any comments or questions or anything in particular you'd like to see about the butt kicker, please let me know down below in the comments section. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you would like to see part two of the series, click up here if it's available. Thanks for watching.